we'll talk about kinematics in two dimensions. Uh, we already have talked about equations of kinematics and if we, for the sake of simplicity, if we assume xi to be 0 and uh, ti to be 0, then we know equations can be written as xf equals vit plus half a ti I mean TF square. And also we can write VF square equals VI square plus two A XF. Now this is true with this situation and this is not really a problem we can always remodel our problem so that xi is 0 and ti is 0 in fact most of the time you'll be given xi to be 0 and ti to be 0 or you can make xi to be 0 and ti to be 0 and the third equation is vf equals vi plus at so the other basic trait tf i mean okay with these in mind, let's say you have a particle which is moving along the y-axis. Let's say this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. And this guy is moving along the y-axis. And if you apply a force in this direction, which means you provide him an acceleration then what happens uh, let's say this is moving the velocity v after a while and let's say you give it, it an acceleration a so what do you think what will happen well will this a affect this v the acceleration will cause any change in v well it should not cause any change in v because acceleration is perpendicular to the velocity it's not going to act on this velocity because it's it's just perpendicular uh, so this is completely along the y-axis this is completely along the x-axis so is not a is not going to affect the y so v is going to stay the same but this particle will get a new velocity after time t which will be a t in the x-direction so what is the morale of the story? This, the morale of the story is that x does not care what is happening in y and y does not care what is happening in x. So any problem in kinematics for two dimensions can be actually broken down into two parts. What is happening in the x direction and the other part what is happening in the y direction. As a matter of fact, we can rewrite these equations for the x-axis and for the y-axis. We already have written it for the x-axis. Let's put a subscript here so that we talk. Of, we are talking about acceleration in the x-direction. And we can also write and we have to put a subscript here also x, x, x half a y Tf squared Vf squared equals Vy plus 2Ay Yf and Vy well I forgot x here put x is here also Yf equals v y y i plus a y t f so what is happening is this let's say you have a particle moving with a velocity v i does not look like v so let's make this v i 
and you apply an acceleration a i now they are in some direction we do not know then this is the axis system this is x this is y if in re with respect to this axis system let's assume that v i has a cartesian representation v i x comma v i y and a i has the cartesian representation a i well sorry it's not a i it's just a so a has the representation a x comma a y let's make this a only there's no initial or final acceleration and given this is the velocity and this is the acceleration this problem breaks down in two parts right so this velocity can be written as can be broken down into x axis and y axis you know that this velocity is this this vector is in the polar coordinate and you can always break into cartesian coordinate to get the two components similarly the acceleration a here um, has is in polar coordinate because just an arrow and it can be broken down into the x and y components and uh, then you have this x component for velocity and the y and the x component for acceleration which will go in this set of equations and you have a y component for velocity and the y component for acceleration which will go in this set of equations you have broken the problem into two situations let's take an example let's say you're standing here very tiny and you throw the ball and it goes like this and your friend somewhere here he catches it and let's say you throw it an angle theta and the velocity by which you throw it is v, is v. now it's a vector problem so you define you define your x-axis, uh, y-axis and you also define your x-axis right so just here just when you throw the ball the velocity vector is going to be something like this right and you can see that you have specified the magnitude v and the angle theta so this is in polar coordinates but you can write down the Cartesian, car, car, the Cartesian uh, components of this vector, which is which are going to be v cos theta, comma v sine theta. Right? This is your velocity. Okay. Talking about v cos theta, is there any acceleration in this direction? Let's talk about acceleration first. The only acceleration acting throughout is g right and g can be written as well g you see is pointing downward in the uh, in the negative y direction so g is going to be 0 comma minus g right so you have a problem in which v i x is somewhere I'm writing vix, somewhere I'm writing vxi, please assume just, just the same thing, is v cos theta and g is, I mean, not g, the corresponding gx is 0 and the other set of the y axis is viy equals v sine theta and gy is minus g right okay now what happens what is happening in the x-axis well you see that the for the x-axis this guy is just moving with a constant velocity there is no acceleration the, the velocity is constant so what is happening in the x-axis is that the particle is moving like this this is the motion just in the x-axis how about this axis? For this axis, you see the 
the, the particle has some initial velocity in the y direction but also there's an acceleration which is pulling it downward so in the y direction the object is actually looking behaving like this right and so it takes off here from your hand and it's, it la ends up here in your friend's hand these two combined motions look like this parabola this is a parabola so let's calculate few things let's say you want to calculate how long the particle was in air so which of these two motions are you going to consider to find out the time of flight which means how long the object was in air well you should you, you might have clearly observed that you know, this aspect of the motion is the one which is deciding how long the object is in air because you throw it up and it comes back how would you find the time well we have to use one of these three equations to find the time so you see this it has this motion has two parts from bottom to the top and from top to the bottom so it has actually some time it takes here and the same time it takes in coming down and if you do a small math you will see using one of these equations in fact using the third one you will see t is nothing but v sine theta over g use this equation and figure this out that how this is t v, v sine theta over g okay you have t the time of flight someone can ask how long the particle traveled which is called the range so if someone can ask how long the particle traveled uh, well the particle is traveling because of this motion this guy is moving the particle and you see this is moving with a constant velocity and you know that distance traveled from previous lecture you, you should you should be remembering that that the uh, the travel dis displacement is actually velocity time the time taken so range is going to be velocity in the x direction because it's the velocity in the x direction that is causing the particle to go forward times time what is time time for which it keeps moving forward and time for which it keeps moving forward is the time of flight so that gives us velocity is v cos theta multiplied by um, time which is 2 v sine theta divided by g why 2 because t is this but the total time of flight is t plus t and that gives us 2 v square sine theta cos theta divided by g which can be rewritten as v square sine 2 theta divided by g right so let's just recapsulate what we do any problem in kinematics can be broken down in set of equations for x-axis and set of equations for y-axis they share uh, common variables like time uh, but anything else is not shared for example time is same in um, uh, this motion and this motion but acceleration is different in both of them there is no acceleration in this motion and there is acceleration in this motion also the initial velocities are different this guy has an initial velocity of v cos theta which stays same but this guy has an initial velocity of v sin theta and all this because we started by breaking the problem in set in 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 variables which are just in the x-axis or component which are just in the x-axis and component which are just in the y-axis so this is a trick don't get scared by problems uh, kind problems in kinematics for two dimensions uh, in the next lecture we'll take one more example to make things um, even more clear